Hello everybody, this is Spanker and today we're going to do a quick test flight in this TBM 850. So as you can see from the outside it's quite a nice looking plane, love the long nose on it. Very uh, sleek, nice little V-tail at the back, like that looks very nice let's jump inside oh I'll look at some more views then press the wrong button there we go let's just reset track IR already so I had a quick flight in this earlier and for some reason track IR has been a bit funny with me today let's try resetting again there we go Um, I'm not 100% sure of the startup procedures for this aircraft. It has got uh, checklists and whatever, and I could read the manuals, but I'm not like that. So, let's have a look. The first thing is, I've removed the uh, York here so I can get to these uh, buttons. Parking brakes on. Flick these up, battery on. I think that looks about right. And then what have we got over here? Fuel select on. We'll flip that to auto. That's set to auto. Maybe I'm not to leave them off for now. Got the ignition to auto and I think we click that starter and I just need to put in some of the mixture to reach here we go over let's just reset them to caution lights stick that to I think that's an APU and then let's turn the avionics on Done something wrong with you, that's a look. Started too off, so what have I got on? This uh, lead off. I think it's somewhere down here. This. There we go. It's only one I've got is pike and break. Proper RPM, I haven't turned the prop up yet, so I'm just going to. Uh, Turn the prop to full forward. So this IPM should start coming up now a little bit. Let's press enter on this uh, Garmin. So we've got quite a big GPS display there. I think it's pretty much standard. Bit of a wobble there for some reason. Autopilot's up here. 
and then we have the GPS for the FMS here controls we've got some de-ice buttons down here and then the light switches are up here so let's turn the taxi light on nav strobe pulse system don't know what a pulse system is look we'll turn it on anyway now that all them are on we can get rid of these the problem these tend to block the buttons I've got to move that to unblock the buttons it's a bit strange but nevertheless we're in so we're going to do a quick VFI flight I'm just going to set up the PFD I want the out units in X Pascals please thank you wind option 2 is always good so this looks pretty much standard sort of uh, multifunction display this looks pretty standard oh that's uh, slightly different so it's giving me graphical representation rather than uh, Than anything else. Gen, I wonder if these are. What's oh, gen? I wonder if they're some sort of generators. So you have that big thing on the, the left wing there, whatever that may be. No idea what that is. I haven't got one there. I have no idea. I'll have to uh, do some research find out what that is. system map let's have a, a top or topographical map on right we're ready to taxi so parking brake off quick check Back, quite a few seats in the back. This is uh, the feel of this aircraft. It feels like it's got power. It really does. I'm just tickling that throttle and that engine spooling up. Really feels like it's got a lot of power under the hood. A bit of a crosswind takeoff, but not to worry. It's 
So I think it's uh, 27, runway 27 we're going to take off from. So we're just taxiing down to the end of that now. The fire station. Hopefully we won't be needing that. I'm not going to go out to the end of the runway all thinking if this is a, oh, it's a run off I may as well go to the, the end, it's quite a distance. I actually thought when I would uh, started the flight I was in this parking area over here to the left. GA parking area I'd selected. I thought it was here to the left and I'd be taking off on 27 which would have been a bit quicker but I wasn't, I was uh, way down at the uh, other end of the runway. Right, so I'm going to adjust the trim for takeoff. Now, the trim wheel has no markers on it. The actual marker is down here on on this. Uh, so I'll just get that into the green. Maybe I do need to put some rudder trim in. It looks like there's a green mark for the rudder trim. I'll leave it, I'll, uh, I'll do it manual. Right, I'm going to take this right here. Not bothering with ATC as usual. There's nothing landing. Runway's clear. Can't see anything on approach, I'll be gone. Okay, I suppose I should just flip that on, London lights. Just an annoyance, I've got to move the sun visor. Okay, smoother to full power. Pretty stable on the roll. We're up. Bring up the gear. Is pretty uh, quick. We're at 127 knots already. Quick look outside. Looks 
looks all looks nice. I'll make a right turn. Pulling throttle back to about 70 percent now. 170 knots. Let's try some manoeuvres, we're going to try a uh, quite a tight right turn, so Seems pretty smooth in the roll. And it's it all seems pretty stable as such. So we'll, uh, come back round now, pull that power back a bit, at almost three thousand feet. Let's just have a look at what my uh, FPS is. So it is dropped. I don't know if that's the scenery. Hmm, 20. Eighteen's not not ideal but we are using Oibix England we've got it turned up fairly high running at 1440p obviously active sky is running and the capture software as well so maybe get a couple of more frames without the capturing happening is captioned to a separate hard drive so I actually do like this aircraft though in fact I'm thinking of uh, currently doing a series on around the world tour I'm using a Diamond DA42 and my first impression was I really like the flight, the, the, the aircraft and the flight model seemed okay. I'm having a lot of problems with the rudder and the brakes on the that aircraft. It's not ideal and it's uh, becoming to a point where it's, it's getting annoying that I'm taking off and landing and it's all over the place on the runway the, the, the steering seems really really badly uh, modelled so I am thinking of changing the aircraft part way through the series so this 
potentially could be the one I'm going to change it for. But I'm going to make that decision once I've got a few more flights in this and making sure this is alright. I'm not sure what the range is on this aircraft because some of the stints I've done have been quite long. But it's, uh, it seems, I think it's faster than the DA-42. Uh, it certainly seems the glass cockpit is probably better because we've got a larger GPS display here. Other than that, it's uh, it's all the same. It's a standard uh, glass cockpit. So I may very well change to this aircraft for that uh, series. One stage of flaps down. I'll drop the wheels. Should sl slow us up a little bit. And I've got a landing flap set. Needs a bit of power on the oh, oh. Jesus Christ, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I don't remember that doing it in my last flight. Oh. This is very draggy with all that, uh, everything down. I don't think we'll... Stolen. That was uh, fun. I'll have to read up on this aircraft because I totally uh, have misjudged that. Stolen at a couple of hundred feet. Seems a bit stable now. Test these brakes. The brakes on this don't seem good. Maybe that's realistic for the aircraft, but that was uh, unconventional. I don't know what happened on the approach. I've obviously got too slow and too low. So I'll have another couple of test flights in this before I decide if I'm going to uh, use this plane in my round the world tour. Quite loud out here.
Right, that's it, I think. I will... My overall my first impression really is it's nice to fly. I need to do some research on, uh, obviously, the approach of this aircraft because I just nearly crashed it. Other than that, it seems very nice. I like the glass cockpit. I love the size of that GPS, central GPS. I don't like that. But it's not a deal breaker to be honest. Other than that, I think if it's got the uh, if it's got the range that it uh, I want for the uh, around the world, I will be swapping to this. It's very nice. Okay, I will catch you in the uh, next video.